uh, well, uh, well, welcome <laughs> to another episode. Well, I never got queued in before. <laughs> Jin has got production is, experience. Huh? Another no, episode podcast. Start, has it, has it started? Yeah, start already. Okay. My two day. What can I call? All right. Uh, I thought you were gonna do the clap. So no you can actually, sync. actually, I, I initially last time I always do a clap. I realized when editing, I don't use the clap. Right. Yeah, because because I have to edit the sound first. Then anyway, at the end of the day, I just adjust the visuals to the sound, which is not that hard, lah. Because technically, I only have one sound output and one video output, so mm. it's not that hard. Mm. If you have multiple voice, then I think mm, yeah, mm-hmm. that is more important. Okay. Yeah, so last time I always try hard. Then after I realized that actually I don't need it. I can just follow the the mouth movement. Then mm. more or less there. Then can. It's a very long intro. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes, like we digress. Uh, welcome <laughs> to another episode of podcast. Um, here today we have me, Jeanette. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> In fact, what, you're damn useless, right? <laughs> Instead of, yes. instead of introducing oh, I'm her, intro, huh? I don't know. <laughs> you just like smiling and then stare awkwardly into space. What do you mean to do? Okay, like okay, we have Jeanette here today. Now you can do your shout out to Yu Sing. Yeah, a, a special mention to Yu Sing for being a diehard fan of this podcast. That's why we are still able to do this session today. <laughs> Is Jeanette a good co-host? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> wow, good job, nah. guys. Uh, okay, um, we just <laughs> anyhow cobble out the points, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, we anyway. invited Jeanette today. Actually, today is like the day before Last the CB one point five. Is what a lot of people call it. Is it one point five? Why is it one point five? It's not phase one because phase one is just totally don't go right. out. Like whereas phase it's not phase two either because phase two is a lot more. Now. Yeah, yeah. So. Some people dub it as 1.5. Right. Then some people dub it as circuit breaker back to circuit breaker. Then some people say, like, hey, wait, it's, we, technically we never left circuit breaker anyway. <laughs> mm, so, that's true. Yeah. Um, but anyway. anyway um, the news just came out yesterday. Yeah. Anyway, Jeanette still can come here because regardless, you can have two unique visitors. Mm. So, no, maybe we need to say what are the, what is the difference between today and tomorrow. <laughs> Today is the present and tomorrow is the future. <laughs> yes. Quote of the day. <laughs> uh, What's the difference? Firstly, no dining know. out. Yeah. So I today don't know. is the last day of dining out. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't go too much into circuit breaker okay. because... That's digressing. Yeah, that's digressing a bit. But, okay. uh, but yeah, this is Jeanette's first circuit breaker. Woo! How does that feel? <sighs> Honestly, depressing. Really? Yeah, when I got the news, I was like, no, I thought I missed the whole of that lot. You know, <laughs> why are we here again? Yeah. 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 But she, she, your, it's your first one because last year, during Circuit Breaker, where were you? I was in a pack house in New Zealand packing kiwi fruits. <laughs> that pack, was pack house is, <laughs> so it's not like packed, like a lot of people packed. It's like packing well, it's a lot of people packed into the house packing a lot of kiwi fruits wow. also. Oh, no, no. It's a pack yeah. of the pack of the pack. Yes. Okay, nice. Yes. You don't have to wear nice. masks. No, you don't have to at all. Oh. It's like optional. So people, yeah. then you, were, you didn't need to have social distancing? Uh, Technically, at the peak of COVID, you had to have a two meter distance, but mm. it was a lot easier because New Zealand is so big and so it was easier more to spacious. Yeah, distance yourself from people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you didn't have to wear masks and you were just packing kiwi fruits. <sighs> yes. How yes. long? Okay, so you went... So, okay, anyway, this podcast, we actually want to cover more about... It's like, there's no intro. Yeah. There's no context. <laughs> Who am I? It's like, pack house, pack house. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jeanette is uh, Yvette's friend. Yes. Uh, we go way back. Way it's back. Like 15 years old. Um, yeah. 15 is like three. No, 15 years ago. 15 years ago. <gasps> right? Oh yeah. My gosh. yeah. Uh, 15 hashtag years friend, <laughs> friendship 15. Friendship <laughs> <Yeah>. 15. <Yeah. laughs> do that hashtag. Yeah. And uh, Jeanette actually went to New Zealand to stay for, is it a year? Yeah. It ended up being 13 months. Wow. Yeah. 13 months. Yeah. Wow. And you came back when when you came back? This fact. This February. Yeah, so when so you went, it was like November... 2019. December. December, December 2019. 2019. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So that was just oh. before... Just All before... All hell shit loose. went down. Yeah. Yeah. All chaos. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So when... So when you were... 
there in New Zealand, uh, you experience like the circuit breaker, and, not circuit breaker, like the COVID rules mm, when they you're over there. Mm. Mm. They have lockdown. I think New Zealand was different from Singapore. Singapore didn't want to fool out, come out and say, hey, we're going to do a lockdown. But that's what, that's exactly what New Zealand did. Mm. So I think two days before actual lockdown, Jacinda announced that the country was going to go into full lockdown, mm. which meant that everyone needed to stay at home and shops would be closed. So there was definitely some panic going on. Oh, really? Yeah. Especially for me, because I was a traveler there and mm. if... I was going to be in lockdown, what would I be mm. doing? You know, that yeah. was my main concern. Yeah. Were they also scrambling for toilet paper? In Auckland, yes. <laughs> it's very yes. interesting. This it's interesting like, human. No matter where you are why, in the world. world. I don't know. Like, they really scared Pang Sai got not enough paper. <laughs> like, 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 guys, you just use water and yeah, soap. There's so many yeah, there's ways Worst to case go scenario, right? Yeah. But it's like, yeah. no. <laughs> Essential toilet paper. Yeah, why? Yeah, I need to stock up forever. <laughs> I think people it's were like not zombie rational. apocalypse. Uh. Yeah. And toilet paper would be the currency, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a joke about it? I think I've, I've seen that joke go around. What's the joke? There it was some show that was like in the I think it was supernatural or some TV series. Then they talk about like in the future, next time we got zombie apocalypse, you better hoard all the toilet paper you can. So they brought it up like last year during the peak of the panic buying. Wow. <laughs> That's so dumb. Yeah. But uh, actually quite interesting. Actually from in Singapore, actually we also follow how New Zealand deal, deals with it quite we? closely. I f- at least for me. Because I feel like they were also being brought up like a what the, what's that word? model country model. on how, yeah, it, they were, how they were. it's done. Yeah. So in Singapore was also mm. being brought as a model country and then the shit mm. happens. Yeah. Mm. The and then after a while, then we're like, oh, look, Singapore is the model country again because mm. we look at how we deal with it. And then now we have this again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's this weird cycle uh, yeah. where we're being praised and then people laugh at us and then mm. being praised again. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's quite interesting. Because uh, I also have a friend who is... Uh, she's Even now, she's still in uh, New Zealand. New Zealand. Uh, and I hear the perspective of like... My understanding is like when it's locked down, actually... Uh, it's like, for example, you cannot work, right? Some For mm. some people, for mm. certain jobs that uh, people who travel there to do, they cannot work. Mm. then it affects like maybe their visa or like they if there's no work they also cannot get paid mm. and yet you're, you're just every day just bleeding money mm. yeah then you also don't really know what to do should you go back should you not go back yeah what's she doing there she was working at uh what's that bakery some f- no fuck fuck <gasps> fuck burger yeah but I think she said that there's a bakery yes branch right yes. yeah I think she was working there wow yeah so but I think she recently she left, but she because she got a she got to be a pastry chef somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, which is what she wanted to do in the first place, lah. Mm. So so she has to I think adjust the visa or whatever. Because whatever. the visa is provided by the company. Mm. Is that how it works? Yeah, that's how it works. That, okay. that's how it works. Okay, yeah. so that's interesting. So I I think maybe you can share with us more about like. Wait, why you even want why, to go in the first Why you want to do... Like and then maybe we can talk about like the processes that you have to go through. Yeah. Mm. Like back in 2019, why do you even want to go? Right. Oh, yeah, so we need to rewind back to 2015. <laughs> what? 2015? <laughs> Fresh out of NTU. <laughs> yes. So me and a bunch of friends went to Australia for a grad trip. Oh. Yeah. And it was during then, you know, being on Aussie land down under, I was like, Wow the life here is so different from Singapore. You know, the people there were chill. They looked like they had work-life balance and actually they looked like they have life balance, you know, not so much work, you know. (laughs) So I was like, wow, this is the life for me. So I think it was then that I was very interested to pursue something, you know, In in, in, in Australia. So one thing led to the other and then I realized that New Zealand offered this program which was a working holiday program where you would be granted a six months visa to go over there to travel and work. Mm. So Australia, we didn't, Singapore didn't have anything with Australia at that point in time. Mm. So I was, you know, I was drawn into the idea and then subsequently Australia did announce that they were, they had this partnership with Singapore. Recently? Uh, I think two years ago. Oh. Yeah, and it was a one-year visa. So even better than New Zealand. But I think by that time, I was already, you know, um, 
kind of I stuck with the New Zealand idea. Mm. So I decided to go for 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 that. Yeah. My long term goal back then was for me to go to New Zealand. To become a ship. Huh? To become <laughs> I don't know what get, kind of get dream get me. <laughs> 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 Man, and then eat grass. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to do. Right? That's how you work, right? They okay. can explore the lands. <laughs> Okay, this maybe like maybe for a good game idea. Eh? Like playing on Switch. That's, eh? a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a goat simulator. <laughs> but that game is then dumb. Eh? It's like you go around and destroy things. Eh? Oh, <laughs> as a goat. As a goat. Yeah. But oh, okay, what? sorry. Oh, okay. Co- continue. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go that ahead. was a dumb joke. But yeah. You wanted to be a... Long-term uh, goal. I wanted to go over there, hopefully find a job, stay there long enough to be granted New Zealand citizenship, then move to Australia to be granted Whoa. Australian citizenship. Whoa. And then finally And then continue, no? No? After Australia, then you want to conquer another country, no? No, no, no. <laughs> Papua New <Yeah>. Guinea. <laughs> I don't know. You just keep going up. And come in, 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 eventually back to Singapore. Singapore. Full circle. Yeah, full circle. <laughs> so no. your ultimate goal is to go to Australia. Yeah, that was my ultimate goal. Through New Zealand. Goal. Yes. Because yes. New Zealand and Australia, they are like quite yeah, really, really close, right? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So easy to get New Zealand citizenship, man. Eh? Uh, they have more sheep than people, so. I uh, my uh, my understanding from what I've heard is that actually New Zealanders trying to actively court Singaporeans to go over. Really, they have a labour shortage. Apparently, they like oh. Singaporeans. I don't know whether but that's true. I think true. there are a lot of Singaporeans studying in New Zealand also, right? Mm. New studying in New yeah. Zealand. Yeah, I've met like when I was in exchange in Canada, I met a Singaporean who was studying in New Zealand. So she was an exchange from the New Zealand University. And I think she's wow. still living there. Like, I think she married and then like mm. settled there. Interesting. Yeah, and actually at the time when you went, you went New Zealand too, right? Like two, three, four years yeah. ago? Uh, mm, yes. Before yeah. we got together. Yeah. Before we got together. I also, so, yeah, I also went there years. around the same time. Right? Oh. I noticed a lot of Asians where like walking uh, in Auckland. Auckland. Yeah. Auckland. Yeah. No, so Auckland, Auckland has Auckland. a lot. A That's lot of my Asians. understanding. Yeah. 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 But in yeah. South Island, actually not yeah. as many. So compared. they're more white, yeah. white people. I think so, yeah, generally. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember eating at some uh, Thai place somewhere. At, I think Nelson. Uh. That's like the northern, northern part of South Island. Yeah, then we were like, oh, Asian food. Yeah, because we were like so sick of eating burgers and chips and whatever. Yeah. Then the, I think the, the shop was opened by a Malaysian. Oh. Then he heard me and my friend talking. So they're like, oh, you are like you know, Singapore or Malaysia. Oh <laughs> so we had a conversation. Like, he told us that actually most Asians are at Auckland. Mm. A lot of Malaysians at Auckland also. Oh. So they got a lot more Asian food. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that was quite interesting. Then why did he yeah. choose to settle at Nelson? I can't remember. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. South Island's tourism mostly. Is it? Yeah. I see. South Island so, is where? Auckland it's the South, South Island. <laughs> okay, Auckland is in the North Island or South Island? North. north. Okay, okay. It's the north of the North Island. Okay. Ish. Yeah. I've only been to Auckland, uh, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Auckland is located more north. Uh, yeah. Of North Island. Yeah. I thought. Then slightly below Wellington. Oh, is Wellington it? is the south, south of North Island. Okay. Yeah. So between Auckland and Wellington, it's about an eight hour drive. Oh, which you've dro- driven before, yeah. that's why you know. Directly, you don't yeah. like stop over or you one no, shot. No, I've never, I've never done it in one shot. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, if you crazy. were to do it in one shot, okay. it's crazy. That's yeah. not fun. It's like driving up to Penang, ish. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, like going Genting, oh. Oh yeah, like going Genting. A, a bus yeah. ride is. Wow, oh, that was not fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys took a bus to Genting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is there any other way to get to Genting actually? Plane to fly, KL. Then you take a bus hey, from there. Hey, we took a bus to Genting too. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, we went Genting together. Yeah. So. With Joanne right. and Charmaine. Yeah. yeah. It was my birthday trip. Was it? Yes, oh. I remember. <laughs> so we yeah, took a bus yeah, yeah. up there and then Charmaine's father came to pick us up. Yes, right? and then we stayed at Charmaine's KL house. Yeah. Oh, a what? shout out to Charmaine too <laughs> for introducing <laughs> us. She's going to pop soon, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. July. Yeah. 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 Wow. That was like even longer. Oh, oh, that going to be 10 years. Nah. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that. I don't know. Shit. 10 years. Ten years <laughs> Actually, it could have this. been. I think it could have been 10 years. I JC, when we were in yeah, JC. I yeah. was in JC and then you were in Bali, I think. I think so. Damn. Moment okay, of silence anyway. for all of us. Yeah, moment yeah. of silence, guys. Speaking of the pictures that we took back then, too. Like, oh. I'm sure it's on Facebook somewhere. Uh, I think it is. <laughs> Okay, anyway, let's go back to from <laughs> oh, oh yeah, let's so go back let's go from Genting back to New Zealand. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, 
okay. was, oh, we, are, we are still in Australia because our ultimate goal is oh. Australia residency. Yeah. But why yeah. why you want to go through New Zealand then to Australia? Why can't it's because Aus- going directly to Australia is difficult. Uh, I mean, you had that program with Australia, but I think at that point I had already been to Australia uh-huh. a couple of times, so I thought okay, somewhere new. And, and then Sun Pin also work towards that. Yeah, kind of. It's yeah. not like as though your end goal is Australia yes. and you have to work through New Zealand. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And but I thought like a lot of um, Singaporeans, if they want to go to Australia, they will just study in Australia and then get a job yeah. there and then that's how they settle there. Yeah. So I why? don't know whether it's they want to be in Australia. It's just that sometimes it's they happen to study in Australia and then they mm-hmm. like get there and they settle down there. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure there are some also, I guess like they want to be in Australia so they just go there. But don't you have family... I have Australia. relatives staying in Australia. Uh, but I think it's like, it's like that, that family is like three of them. So the elders went there. I don't know whether he went there to study first. Probably did lah. Study and then settled down there. Then the siblings just follow. Oh. Like, like, oh, actually quite nice. Then I think he also kind of sell to them like how it's better and more chill, mm. you know. It's a and they pay well. Though. They do pay well. Huh, really? Yeah, but I think it's like give and take. Like, cost more taxes or so, right? Oh. So more taxes. But, uh, I think at that time also Australian dollars were a lot stronger compared to Singapore yeah mm. so so there's like and then you have work-life balance you pay decently so yeah welfare also mm. yeah <sighs> but yeah, oh my nice. god there's a lot of bikes out there yeah that's what oh, I meant the dead bikes sleeping. in the morning <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> then he like still like snoring away. Then I'm just like, then I can hear the bikes from the dead road. Then I can hear, Ew. Ew. Wow. And you're on side. the 14th floor. Eh. He's Apparently dead sound he? echo upwards. Uh. That's what he So if you're on the third floor, okay, you're fine. But, but I have to understand that my flat here, there's two HDB facing each other. Yeah, so the so sound the kind of reverberates. Oh. So it, it gets a bit louder. Sometimes oh. I hear like, what is this sound from outside there? They check outside there. Actually, no. The sound is from there. Yeah. The sound is from there. They echo. It is like it, the basketball court is there, right? But like you, you can, can hear it. It's from there. Yeah, like the ball oh, bouncing. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, so it's the way like sound travels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You digress. Okay, digress again. again. Um, yeah. Uh, that's why it's an hour long. <laughs> <laughs> like if you really condense the the podcast, actually yeah. five minutes done. <laughs> Key point. Ta, 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 ta. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, I hope you can cut out all the Wait, okay. Randomness. So anyway, did it change? Like you know, like do you still wanna have? Settle in New uh, Australia or New Zealand or, I mean I think my experience in New Zealand did sway me a bit. You know, Ooh. being in New Zealand, I felt that maybe I could resonate more with New Zealand's vibe, like Kiwi culture. To, yeah, compared to Australia. What's the difference? Yeah. I think New Zealanders generally okay. One thing that struck me was how polite and nice the people are in New Zealand. Yeah, I think okay. So everyone says that Japanese people are the most polite. You know, mm-hmm. people they, they ever encounter. But they're very pego. Uh, right? <laughs> but you wouldn't know what. Uh, as yeah. a from customer service perspective, you would never know. Yeah. But yeah. I guess. I yeah. mean, I thought when you read online, like the Japanese people, they're very yeah, pego to each other. But yeah, mm-hmm. the culture is they are not direct. So that's mm-hmm. why they're very pego. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Everything like they the, say. Like the language we're learning also, like the things they say yeah. is very indirect, very pego. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like basically if you're direct, means you're rude. Mm. That's the that's the the like how the language works. I think in general Asians are rather uh, non direct. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't know what the Chinese people are. Them aggro. What? Chinese can be quite direct. What the yeah. language? Japanese language is very very indirect. Mm. It's like it's like would you like to do something? Is in their words is like would you prefer to not do this or something like that? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, then that's the way of saying, can you do this? Mm. So it's very, very indirect. It's very right. weird. It takes a while to like, wrap okay, your head I around. Oh, I see. I but see. yeah, okay, you're saying they're very nice. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> <digressing>. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> that was my first impression and it, it, is, it is still my impression of Kiwi people. Yeah, so I think that... That was a very good starting point for me, you know, being being surrounded by very nice, kind people who welcomed you to their mm. country. So I felt that in general also, New Zealand is a lot, uh, there's a lot less people over mm. there. So mm. it's not as crowded as Australia and it's smaller than Australia. So you can get around pretty easily. Compared yeah. to Australia. Yeah. So Aust- I mean, yeah. there were a few things that you know I appreciated about New Zealand that I didn't think I would consider prior yeah like what like 
the skill of the country, the 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 kind of opportunities, I guess, also. Um, opportunities like career. Yeah, career opportunities. Mm. They were more they're more chill, I guess. I think mm. they're chill even more chill than Australians. Really? Yeah. So that's like Actually cool. maybe oh. Yeah, maybe before we go on, maybe you want to share what they have you what were you doing in New Zealand? Like what are the things you have done over there mm. in your thirteen month? Okay, so I've worked in a vineyard, I've worked in a pack house, and I've worked in a cafe. Mm. So in a vineyard, what were you doing specifically? I was picking grapes. So your day to day is pruning, yeah. How is your day to day like? Okay, so we will wake up at seven and then report at seven thirty. Mm-hmm. And then we will go down to the fields and then start like cutting, then cutting, pruning. No one's saying that. Oh, nope. <laughs> Drop a few grapes. You can, off. but it's like, oop, oop. Because right. it's like sour. It's huh? not oh. like ready yet. Oh, so when you pluck it, it's not sweet yet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So, so in, you don't pluck it first. You prune it. Prune so means you cut away the stem? Dead leaves. Uh, oh. Okay, so the fruit will just grow, right? Yeah. But you need the fruit to be able to breathe. Because if it's all congested mm. and then it's a bit moist, they start to like become moldy. moldy yeah. And yeah, so you need to make sure there's no overcrowding. I see. Yeah. So that means you snip off certain leaves, yeah, certain snip branches. Yeah, off certain fruits. I see. Yeah, so you just pick the ones that... I mean, with less fruits also, means it's more concentrated, the goodness. Oh. Yeah, they, I mean... So these are grapes that are meant to be wine, right? Yes, yes. They were, they're meant to be harvested. Wine? Oh. Oh, you there's know. so many, but I forgot all of oh them. Yeah, like certain in the vineyard, wine. all grapes are meant for wine. No, there are certain grapes. So, so, so like based on the quality, or is it based on the species? Based on the species. I see. Yeah. Okay. So you have your purple grapes, mm-hmm. then you have your green grapes, mm. and then there's different varieties. And only which certain I types of grapes can be wine grapes, right? Not all grapes. Are I wine think grapes. so. I think so. Mm. Yeah, I'm not doing justice to like yeah, and then whatever the soil I learned there. Too, right? Yeah, the, the weather. Actually, the most important thing is the weather. Mm. That's why Singapore is not conducive because it's too moist. Too humid. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you need the grip. You need a very dry climate, but we've still with we still rainfall mm. for the grapes to thrive. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Very delicate balance. Yeah. But yeah, so I would prune the grapes. It was like frankly hard and. Labor, like, it's just labor, yeah. repetitive labor. Yeah, it's very repetitive. You did that for how long? A month. Okay. Yeah, but you could see it to fruition because uh, we did the harvesting of fruition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> God. Help someone save me, please. <laughs> These two feeding on each other. I was like, uh, get me out of here. <laughs> it's my podcast, but get me out of here. <laughs> okay, sorry. So you started the harvest? <laughs> yes, so yes, we harvest. Three months? Okay, I think when I joined, it was also the tail end of, of it being... The season. Uh, yeah, cool. so oh. I mean, I have a study, but I didn't see it actually being bottled because for, for the grapes to... But the vine also be, bottled it. No, they will send it they to a company to, uh, yeah, uh, to process it, facility yeah, facility yeah, put it in the barrels. Oh, so then it only, month late, a year only later, collect the grapes only. Yes, mm. yes, mm. to throw it in the bucket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, so I mean... These sort of things you will never be able to experience unless you go overseas and yeah. you so try your work it days are like what six days a week or five days a week? Five days a week. Five days a week. And for what what time to what time do you work? Seven thirty to four. Mm. Oh, yeah. With uh maybe one hour lunch break. No, half an hour. Or half an half hour. Half an hour lunch break. And after yeah. that, you're just going around doing the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's one month because it's that's what is decided that they only need help for one yeah. month. Okay, so then after that one month is up, or before, just before that, you were you had to look for another position. Yeah, you could either. I mean, we w- there were three of us doing the job, like three backpackers. Mm. So after the season was over, me and another friend just went to travel, travel oh. around. Mm. Yeah. So you t- kind of take a break. Yes, with sort money of. in our pockets, we went. To How much did they party. pay you? How much did they pay you? Okay, so here's the thing: the minimum wage currently. If I'm not wrong, per hour is twenty dollars. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and in Australia it's even better. It's like twenty three, I think. Wow. Per hour. Okay, so how many hours are you working? Like eight hours. So let's say if it's eight, eight hours. Eight and a half hours, eight hours around there. Eight lah. So one hundred sixty dollars a day. 
Wow. So times but five is about eight hundred a week. It's sixteen to four thirty two, three point two k a month. But how much do you earn? Like how much do you need to spend per day? Not much. Honestly, the standard of living is similar to Singapore. I oh, feel. Oh shit! Then yeah. that's a lot of money. Eh. The only thing is that you don't have very cheap food. Yeah, hawker food. You don't. Yeah, have you don't food. have hawker food. Everything but is like at least ten plus lah. Yeah. Unless you cook yourself. But you cook yes, yourself. but if yeah. you cook yourself, that's then you really yeah. 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 And rent, I guess rent could be maybe one fifty a week, one twenty to one fifty a week, depending on where you are. So, mm. so that's, that's still considerably cheaper than Singapore. Six. Yeah, it right. is. About six, seven hundred dollars on rent. Yeah, that's, that's relatively But do you need to pay tax? I mean, you still get a cut out of... How um, much tax? Because yours considered e- blue collar, right? The tax is lower, right? That's my understanding. E- I think it's by how much you earn in general. Okay, so yeah, the so sing, similar okay. to Singapore. Yeah, so at the, at your at your pay, uh, your tax is quite low, it's Proportional, la, right? Yeah, because you're I earning think only earning minimum wage. It's higher than Singapore's, but I think because we are temporary workers, when we leave the country, we can get tax Rebate. rebates. Yeah. Mm. Oh. So in general, I don't know how much I was taxed, but it didn't feel like a lot. Okay, then when you came back, you so you got back the rebate already. Yeah, I got it. Living. I got it. Before oh, okay. I left, I was like, I sorted out all everything. Was it significant? Like, I think it was quite for a years for yeah for, I think maybe six months, consolidated worth of work, I got back one point four k. It's not bad. Which was yeah, not bad. Yeah, but then what does it mean when you are taxed? Means what? Like, do you get access to public health services? Yes, yes. So healthcare oh, is you, free. Right? Yes, I almost lost a finger oh cutting God. a pumpkin. Yeah, so I was slicing, 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 and then shush. I really thought my finger was gonna oh, shit. go off. Yeah, so I was, I was, I was like, uh, and then a couple of backpackers came and get around me, and I swear I, I almost fainted. Then they helped me, and then I was like, uh, I sense lost of my shock, finger. Uh. Yeah, it was more shock. Yeah. yeah. Related. Shock induced. Yeah. Then I was like, part of it was also like, oh my gosh, I am not going to be able to afford to have them sew my finger back, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, my friend drove me to the hospital. Then we waited and then finally a nurse tended to me. Then after that, I was like, oh, how much is it going to be? Yeah. You know, with a pitiful face. <laughs> she was I like, oh, they can do this talk like that. I don't know. <laughs> you know wear like a torn shirt <laughs> and try to <laughs> and then she was like oh yeah don't worry don't worry about it it's all free <laughs> I was like don't worry about <laughs> it I'll cover it <laughs> wait like, healthcare is free in New yes today. completely free as long okay, as long like- as it's, it's an accident oh yeah so you could get into a car accident I mean Troy mm. but if you did it would be completely covered oh wow yeah. but does it matter who caused the accident no because no. you get an accident but you are the irresponsible person they're yeah. like you, hey, you fucked tree. it up too oh, bad you're gonna pay it. for this shit you're dying but you're gonna pay for yeah, this shit yeah so I think they, the reason why they have this is so that people don't sue each other uh, okay yeah so let's wow. say if I cause the accident you, you're getting it for free anyway I, I don't know maybe they still sue for by like by the way they are very strict with cars like, yes. like road, road traffic Oh. The laws are very yeah, quite like stringent. You get you get, you get fined, fined quite easily if you yeah. speed. Yeah, yeah. I got fined fr- for I think ninety dollars. My friend got fined like four hundred. I think he was driving wow. thirty or forty km above. Mm, yeah, mm. I was driving ten ten km ten wow. kilometers per hour above. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> <laughs> Even ten, you also can. Yeah, but there, there's a crazy. buffer, right? Like maybe five or below yeah, ten. Yeah, I think. I think there is. More than so maybe yeah. I'll be a safe driver there. Because I always stick to the... And I, I like thought to you said you're going to be a safe driver because you don't drive. You don't, you're not going to drive. Do you drive, <laughs> Yvette? <laughs> you know, if uh, I have a car, maybe... You technically... Okay, never mind. Let's di- we digress again. <laughs> but, uh, In the next episode, we deal with Yvette's uh, fear of driving. <laughs> Wait, so anyway, so this is what you were doing. But then, like you were saying, there are career opportunities there. What do you mean by career opportunities? I think because it's a lot less competitive. Really? Yeah, I think so. I think because they don't really have the sort of... Drive? <laughs> oh. like, I mean, no, compared to Singaporeans, Singaporeans are actually quite driven. Are we? No, because of the nature of our... In comparison, of our in comparison. Yeah, we are very competitive. 
no, of our, we, our because upbringing. Because we have to be. We are oh. just like in any country where you know there is more supply than there demand. is more yeah supply, supply. than demand. Oh, okay. Supply of job yeah, compared to demand exactly. for the job. So you need to stand out, right? right. Yeah. Whereas mm. over there, you know, you can get by quite easily. You know, with a lot of them are actually not. They haven't pursued um, tertiary education. <gasps> yeah. But that's yeah. also because the kind of jobs that they take, lot, right? Yeah, it's I know what different. Yes, different. Ours yeah. is like skilled labor, ma. I said, like for Singapore's economy. We are shifted to more skilled. Yeah. Oh, I guess if you're there, you can be a sheep farmer, and that's a yeah. That's a, a very yeah. oh, that's a very decent living. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but hard work, hard work, very yeah, labor intensive. Yeah, so different. But I guess you know there was a wider range of jobs to consider as compared to Singapore. Oh. You know where it was a very traditional office kind mm. of job setting. Yeah. Let's say if you wanted to you know, do something that was very different. You don't even have the opportunity to do it here. Yeah. yeah. You can't be a sheep farmer. Can't Can be a sheep farmer. Huh? Can I play, play your Stardew Valley? <laughs> Go and sheep farmer. <laughs> Wait, so what would, would you have liked to, what would you like to do if you were still in? I think I would have liked to pursue a culinary role. Oh, really? Yeah, like, like a what? cook. Oh. Or a baker. You know, this is mm, similar mm, to your friend, mm. you know? Because you actually get paid reasonably decent. Oh. Compared, okay, you go and look up how much does it, how much you get paid being a baker here. How In much Singapore, it is? it's like 2, oh. 3k. It, I mean, you can even lucky. go down to 1.8, you know? Yeah. Oh. It's a, so it's, yeah. it's not valued here. It's not mm. something that they would mm. pay for here. So you don't even want to consider that, mm. you know? Correct. But, I mean, a lot of times our decisions are influenced by. But I'm so curious because it's like they pay more, but that's also because the places charge more. The right? restaurants. Food, yeah. I think the, I guess we, our problem in Singapore is because we have cheap food. So cheap food means people who prepare this cheap food, they don't get paid a lot. That's why they're usually um, foreign labor. Right? Not really, la. mm. like the, our. I mean, like, hawker centre is not all foreign workers. Oh, that's true. A lot of Singaporeans also. But then, hawker centre, like, it seems like they can... Can they make a living? Actually, they can earn a lot if your food is good, lah. Right. But it's very competitive, right? Because there's so yeah. many stores. Yeah. So, I guess... I Yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, just thinking, like... That, which means, right, if they're able to pay their chef well, uh, means the food is not cheap, right? Yeah, yeah. it's like cafe food, uh. Yeah. But and people are used to paying that price lah to to eat out and stuff like that in New Zealand. Yeah, but I mean you can have <laughs> you can work in a very well established restaurant here, oh. and I doubt they will pay you. Mm. That you is know, true to <laughs> you're right. So That's I think it's too. not really you know uh, linked to how atas the establishment is, but mm. just the norm here and the standard. Because mm. yeah. of. In Singapore, we prioritize certain types of labor and yeah. skills. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. La. Then we incentivize people to towards those jobs. Careers, which are mm. more productive for the economy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's interesting. Because, okay, then when you're going over, because you had a full-time job before you move over, right? Uh, I did. What were your top process in terms of opportunity cost? Because in my mind, uh, sometimes when I think about doing all these things, uh, especially when you hold a stable job already, it's kind of painful when you think about the financial setback that you have to go through. Especially it's like a year, then you're yeah, earning minimum wage. Mm. Yeah. And then you still have to pay for rent and all. Mm. So it's like, it's not, I mean, like you still can survive. You won't be rich, but yeah. Yeah. Then you think about like, oh, do we need to worry about retirement? Because in Singapore, that's always the case, right? When you don't earn enough, then you worry about in the future when you're older, Actually, do you have no, money to get why, why in Singapore, we only think about what we, how we can enjoy our life in the old age? Uh? Why we don't think about how we can enjoy life Because now? we are practical human beings in Singapore. <laughs> I think it's the way we've been brought up. Yeah, it's yeah, also the way we've brought just, up. It's just, it's yeah, the influenced by society rather than yeah, these being just, our own thoughts honestly yeah but we're just thinking like how do we enjoy life in the future we don't think about how do we enjoy life now mm. Ugh. Mm. okay but anyway sorry digressing yeah i think 
you know, those concerns are quite valid. A lot of people have raised them up to me or so. And I, I, I definitely have, it has crossed my mind. But I think I always fell back on this one thought and it's that, you know, when I'm 60 and if I look back on my life, you know, will I be, will this be something that I will regret? This one year out of my 60, 60 years. 70 mm. years, you know? I mean, honestly, who's to say what would happen? Will I even live that long? Mm. If let's say COVID, you know, continues for the rest of our lives and you never got the chance to do it. Like I'm, I was very sure I'll be regretful if I didn't do this. Mm. Yeah. So mm. I rather, to me, it was, it would have been more of a lost opportunity if I just let this pass. Mm. compared to the financial side of things. Mm. Yeah. So were you confident that you'd be able to kind of make up for what you lose in the one year? I think because I had this plan <laughs> since 2015, everything I did was in service of this decision. So I did hustle for three years just to make sure I had saved enough to cover that one year and a little bit more after for when mm. I came back and was still job searching. Mm. Yeah, so I did do my due diligence. Mm. What do you mean by safe enough? What were your met metrics? <laughs> like, like you want to have at least like 50k in your bank? Yeah, I like think I was working towards... Uh, it was kind of like a number plucked out of the air so lah. Like, because yeah. I didn't do it like, oh, how much it would cost me, da da da. Yeah. It was just like, however much I could get, I would put it aside. Yeah, and I think... During my earliest of my career, I had like multiple streams. You know, I cannot reveal too much. Oh my god, <laughs> it sounds so sus. Multiple streams, side hustle. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Visit me at www.onlyfans.com. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is, so definitely fit, not that. Fit, 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 fit. That's why she hired her. She don't have to take off her socks. <laughs> So it's like premium content that she put Dude, out. Dude, if my feet can make me money, I will be the first one on their site. Okay, let me tell you. You don't know, man. You don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to... www.feetpick, is it? Yeah. That works. I will don't be on board. Don't, don't, please don't type me here. I don't, I, I don't, later, later I serve the ads all yeah. like... All feet pics. Yeah, feet, 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 feet. feet. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I, I was able to save more than, Your you know, goal. what, yeah, yeah. So I was quite confident that even if I didn't... Um, oh, it all makes sense now. Now I remember back then, why every time we go out, you're a bit cheapo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still cheapo, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's true, it's still, ah. That's not part of okay, it, la, man. That's true. <laughs> Actually, back then in uni, you're already cheapo, eh? you know, like... Yeah. We will go for free because NTU offer free classes. They call like some program lah. Then we will go for the. Actually, it wasn't free. I right? just pay minimum. I don't know what you're. I can't remember. About. Pretty tough. <laughs> it was called pretty tough. I think so. We'll go for those classes, and then like we come back. Then she will come to my hall. And then she eat my broccoli. Eat your broccoli. <laughs> oh my god! You got no money for broccoli. What are you eating your broccoli? <laughs> Get your own broccoli lah. <laughs> 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 then we will just, just eat broccoli. Eat out, okay? <laughs> we will just eat broccoli. Even though downstairs got candy, but we will just eat broccoli. Like, one hit a broccoli split with <laughs> I thought that was us just trying to Bonding lose weight. Bonding session. It's like, <laughs> no, Eva is like resentment. She's eating yeah, my one hit a broccoli Eva. and she's not even paying for it. Yeah. My fucking yeah, broccoli. <laughs> You know, eat broccoli with the sesame sauce, remember? Yeah. But that was good. That yeah, was it was good. good. It's good because it's free, right? Yeah, was, I thought we were just trying to lose weight. It was that too, lah. Yeah. Then we were still under the stars and eat broccoli. Yeah. That was good memories. Yeah. Oh, that was anyway, interesting. Shit, we digress. I don't know. Oh, yeah, so you saved earning, enough money. Yeah. Yeah. Opportunity then, cost, yeah. But then now you're back. Yeah. How, how does it feel? I think... I mean, still no regrets for sure. You know, mm. coming back, I have to admit that, you know, I I did feel like I was now back in the red race. You know, mm. however, mm. however long I was away for, I think you cannot remove the Singaporean in you. <laughs> you know, you still you still have that kanchungness in you when you come back and you see your peers, mm. you know, doing uh, in I certain think, yeah. ranks, you know, having progressed. And mm. so I think you just need to be, 
sure of yourself and your decisions, I guess. Because, mm. I mean, the runway is still so long. Mm. Everyone's still in their, like, early... No, right years. I'm early 30s. Oh, yeah, late 20s. I'm early 30s. <laughs> early 30s, you know, and... and <laughs> I guess it boils down to what you want in life. You mm. know, do you really want to be the next CEO or next director and you want to earn this amount mm. of money and that amount? You know, for me, I think I've always known that I could... It takes very little to live a fulfilling life, you know. And so for me, I don't need to be like, you know, really super rich. Yeah, I just want to be rich in other aspects, mm. you know, like experiences, mm. da, da, da. So... Yeah, that was you we spoke about like when you came back then we talk about like wanting to cruise sorry right? <laughs> <laughs> like wanting to cruise through life yeah not, like, not the royal Caribbean. Yeah. No, no, wait no, no, let's let let define what is cruise through life also okay <laughs> doesn't mean that you know you bum around and you just like do the bare minimum that's mm. not what I meant mm. okay when I say cruise through what I meant is that like I would value both work and life and so I would not want to devote 80% of my life hustling for mm, something, mm. you know. I would mm. be more than happy to be in a role where I could, you know, be productive and provide value to society, but also allow me to to yeah, enjoy my life. Yeah. Yep. Like, basically, you don't live to work. La. Yeah. 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 I resonate yeah. with that. Yeah, and Eva was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, so the, <laughs> yeah the, the point that you brought up about the rat race was like, I guess I so kind of like fall victim to it. Yeah, like, I mean, at, most of the time, I don't see myself as like trying to chase after like career success in those terms because like I, I do know that I there are things that I prefer to be doing rather than, you know, hustling you and trying to prove <laughs> Yeah, uh, YouTube. I don't know. Am I considered still doing YouTube? I've been losing subscribers, <laughs> but that's not the point. Uh, so so yeah, but then it, it does affect me sometimes when I look around, like like I guess subconsciously I still compare myself to um my my uni friends, my my colleagues that I work with that we I know that we more or less come in the same time. Then sometimes you see them progress a bit faster than you. Yeah, then you start to think like, oh, should like, is it? Am I lacking something? Should I try harder? Yeah, then sometimes I just kind of like let it go. Just like, oh yeah, actually, yeah, whatever lah. Mm. Yeah, but I, 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 when I can't deny that I am subconsciously still slightly affected by some of these things, and it also does affect um decision making lah in terms of um what do I want to do next. Hmm. Yeah, like for example, the whole traveling thing. Also, when I look at it, I also think about, uh, like, like me and Yvette, we talk about like, like, some consider the idea of taking a year break. Hmm. Yeah, I fantasize about it. Like, hmm. it would be nice <laughs> to take a year. Yeah, it would be nice to take a year off from work to, I guess, pursue or like, just live a life that I want to try. Yeah, or like maybe pursue some other form of uh jobs that may. May that I may be interested in, but yeah, but then I start thinking about, yeah, the financial setback that I have to go through, uh, that that my friends will all be one year ahead of me in terms of the amount of money they earn, mm. yeah. Then you start thinking like, oh, this is this the right way to go, but in in that sense, it's also true lah. Like you never finish comparing one lah. Mm. Yeah, there will be people who do better than you. There will be people who do. Uh, worse than you yeah and at the end of the day it's actually uh, everybody's own journey mm. because you compare also no use like compare the comparing is only gonna make you feel worse no, no. yeah but yeah, I guess yeah sometimes I, I guess we just need some reminder every now and then to to not to not get trapped by this idea that mm. we need to be on par or better than other people yeah so I thought I thought when you said that I, I realized that yeah actually I still do compare although I tell myself I I like to I would like to tell myself that I don't mm. but I think subconsciously I still do so yeah yeah so when we talk about like the Japan thing because right I also told you then we're like because one of our friends are a few uh, a couple of our friends mm. 
there uh, are a couple. Yep, uh, yeah. So there are two. A couple. A couple. Yeah. A couple friends. A couple of friends. Okay. A friend who okay, a friend, are friends. Yeah. Friends who are cu- a so couple. So they are like um <laughs> trying to go to Japan and stay there for two years to study. Maybe because like, we are currently studying Japanese, so I want to be fluent in Japanese too, right? I was thinking, actually, if we go there and stay, it's a good way to get more fluent in the language. Mm. Yeah, so we were talking about it at like Shake Shack or something. Mm. And then like Kenneth was saying, yeah, but what about the opportunity cost, right? Mm. Like it's like two years bleeding money and also you lose out on two years of earning money. Mm. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. yeah. But then to me, it's like I feel if you don't do it now, then you will never do it. Because yeah. it's the more established you get in your career, then you got more to lose as compared to now. Yeah. Even now, sometimes when we talk about like wanting to stay in Japan for maybe not even a year, just like one or two months mm. to see how we can work it out. The only thing that I always think about is like how do I how do we do it in an optimal way that we don't have a gap <laughs> you in know? your resume. Like yeah, like like maybe um in between jobs, then that two months we let's go. Then it's like that is also hard to plan because how do we ha- both be in, in between jobs? You know, unless we both get sacked at the same time, lah. <laughs> you know, so it's it's difficult to plan al- around those kind of, yeah, I guess uh, uh ideas lah on on how to go about it. And yeah. if I we really want to do it, you just have to bite the bullet. Just go, yeah, yeah. Just bite the bullet and go. Although I think I mean my rationale is that like you can always uh, explain away, you can always package the gap in a certain way on mm. in order to, you know. Yeah. Explain it. But do you feel like, are there any, because in my mind it's like, how, like, yes, I want to enjoy life and enjoy the the environment in whatever place I want to be. But I also think about, like, long term, what do I do then? Like, so when we talk about, like, going about Japan and stuff, I think we also discuss about, um, like, I don't want to, at the end of the day, it's like, I enjoy Japan a lot. I, I also want to be productive in the sense of, like, we what have I something. achieved something like for example if you go to Japan then maybe I'll spend more time into making videos mm. yeah maybe think about producing content or vlogs about Japan and stuff like that and then maybe at the end of the day there's some takeaway lah you know yeah, no. so, so so I think like if you have those kind of activities it also helps to explain away the one year get me your yeah. resume but when you're at New Zealand do you feel like I, I, I mean based on what I'm hearing that kind of job I mean it's kind of odd jobs it's more like experience in terms of people, but do you think there are like key skills that you take away or that actually is something that uh, you don't really care as much in your perspective? I think for me, it was more secondary because I felt like only after you have been through an experience, then you will have a take shift away. in, yeah, mm-hmm. in, in um, your mindset. You know, because we are so used to, you know, a certain kind of living. Mm. You know, you don't realize that there is a whole different world out there, you know. So I wanted to immerse myself in that. I think, you know, when when you guys were speaking, I think your main concern was still like, how am I going to explain this Mm. gap, you know, when I come back? Which... To me, I think that was never my concern. I, I, I never thought like, oh, how am I going to justify this choice? Because I don't think I, I never felt like I needed to really justify it to anyone except myself, you know. And so maybe one thing you guys can think about is, you know, why don't you envision a life where you stay in Singapore and you continue however you do it? I guess project, you know, and then project a life where you know, let's say you go to Japan for one year, you come back, maybe you are not so, you you, you haven't progressed as far as it had you stayed here. And then you think about, you think long term, and then you think which life would you prefer eventually mm. when you are 50, I guess. Mm. But anyway, and dying. And <laughs> But, so but anyway, I feel like now nowadays now with like COVID and the con like now we'll be probably not be living post COVID, we're probably living with COVID. Oh I don't so think there's depressing. any I don't think there's any point trying to like <laughs> think of a future outside of your ball. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're gonna I move know, there, like, there or whatever. Yeah. Mm. But you see you can still work towards it in some sense. So yeah. when, when it opens, you're ready for it. 
You yeah, see, the, the you thing know. about, like, okay, I mean, I've thought about, like, Japan. I mean, I do like to go to Japan as a tourist. I enjoy their culture. I enjoy their their food, the places, the people, the language. But, like, working there is something that I uh, never put too much thought about it because I know I do know that there's a huge difference in being a tourist of a country and being a someone who contributes to the economy, to the country. Yeah, and there's also that language barrier that makes it a bit hard to think too far into it. Like, it's hard for me to be a professional there mm. as part of being part of the economy. But anyway, unless, like, yeah, unless I'm, like, part of a, I don't know, a media team that is, like, English-speaking, which, which is, I guess, but quite we're, But it's not niche. like we're, we're, like, asking you to settle in another country. You just no, go no. there for uh, Yeah, interview. no, so I'm, I'm just talking about if, let's say, like, for example, what, uh, Gina did was like projecting the idea of like she'll be in this country long term. Oh. That for me, for me, if I think about it from that perspective, for Japan is difficult because I can't see myself being able to thrive in that environment. No, I thought what even if Japan is is not just Japan. one year. <laughs> no, I thought what Gina is asking yeah. is like saying that if you're fifty in and living in Singapore in your BTO flat or HB flat. And then like, oh, what about that one year in Japan? No, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, so, so that, that one I understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I'm Your thinking... No, where, I'm, you just re- <laughs> where you just move in. <laughs> because <laughs> at 50... <laughs> hey, who knows, man? Gosh. At this rate, yeah. 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 No, so, so I'm just thinking more towards like the... Like the idea... Like I, I do think about the idea of... Like... Migrating lah. Mm. Yeah, but I think the the idea of migrating is like firstly it's where right, yeah, and I right now to be honest I find it hard. I guess maybe because Singapore is in this place where actually if you follow the route, it, you are generally quite comfortable. If you are privileged right. enough lah. Yeah lah, you follow yeah. the route yeah. lah, and you you thrive in the route. <laughs> the yeah, route. yeah, you you generally do get by quite well, very comfortable. Yeah, I mean, we are also in a privilege in the sense that we are kind of middle class and we are, you know, the majority. Yeah. So a lot of problems that Singapore have, like some people that they experience, we don't really get that. So in that sense, it's really a comfortable environment for, I mean, we are privileged to have this com- comfortable environment. Yeah, so I don't know. My, mind, my, my thoughts are like kind of scattered in the sense that like, there's a lot of factors running around, right? Like, oh, the idea of like staying one year, then do we migrate? Is it possible? Actually, yeah. never really wanted to migrate from mm. Singapore. Like that. Hasn't, like, you've always, when you're younger, I guess you think like, oh, America seems like so much better. But then you travel, right? Then you're like, oh, okay. You what a shithole. <laughs> no, I never say that. You travel there, you realize, actually, Singapore is pretty awesome. <laughs> mm. You know, so mm. I never, like, as I grew older, then I realized, like, actually, I don't really want to migrate. There isn't a push or pull factor as opposed mm. to, you know, people who are not in the route, who, you know, are maybe LGBT+. plus. Then mm. Singapore is mm. not a, maybe a ideal, safe environment yeah. for them. Then there's that push for them to go outside. Mm. Right? Sadly. But, but I also think about like the like even the one year the whole one year idea that we have actually sometimes I guess maybe I just need to think about it from the perspective of like like you say like you, you don't know you don't know what you're gonna learn until you are you've gone through Country. the experience right mm. and actually to be honest if I look back at like general things in life that I've gone through sometimes a bit unwilling sometimes you, you're just going in not knowing what kind of skills you get actually there's always a lot of things to learn when you are put in a different environment. Mm. Yeah, a lot of things to learn about yourself. A lot of things, uh, a lot of other soft skills maybe that you will pick up along the way that will that actually does shape you and make you grow as a person. Mm. And these are things that um, you wouldn't have if you are always staying in a comfortable environment. Mm. Exactly. Because yeah. change yeah. does. When change you, you can only grow, zone. you can only grow. <laughs> You can only grow when you're Just uncomfortable. <laughs> right? You can only grow when you're exactly, uncomfortable. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where you have mm. to shift, you change, you know how you react to different yeah. stimulus. Stimulus? Yeah. No. Yeah. Stimulants. Stimulants. Mm. Stimulants? Yeah. Stimulus is the money. Stimulus, right? stimulus package. That's the US yeah. stimulus check. Please give me money. Yeah. 
So yeah, actually, yeah, exactly. that's true lah. Look at yeah. it from that perspective. Yeah. Kind yeah. of like you don't try, you don't know, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Don't try, don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, one year is nothing. That's true. Yeah, in the grand I scheme mean, of things, a human life don't matter also. <laughs> we need the universe. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's going. Ah, shit. Here we go again. Ooh, we're losing her. <laughs> Yvette, Yvette, come back. Come back. Come back. <laughs> I mean, in the scheme of the universe, <laughs> la, so if you think about how small your life is, then it's like, why are you? Why do you feel um, like as if you are like hide bound to a certain uh, route? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because in, in the grander scheme of things, that nothing really matters. Mm. I guess yeah. like in Singapore, <laughs> Singapore we don't really get to, we're not encouraged to think that way, lah. Right? Exactly. We, exactly. We are told that. Jeanette sounds like she has a lot of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like about we are, it. <laughs> well, the way we are brought. I mean, my, whatever I've been saying is actually kind of reflective of the things that have been drilled into me mm. since I was a kid. Like get a good job, get oh married, God. get mm, a mm, good mm, house. Mm, just, mm. Just, yeah. just earlier today, then we were talking about what. Um, what we were, what what kind of drive we have as a kid or something, and our main concerns are. Then you were saying that yours is to get good grades and get a girlfriend. Remember? Oh, in uni. <laughs> yeah, in a. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, there was one point in, um, in, like there was a like an existential crisis when I was in. Uh, have I mentioned it before? I worked in high flux. Oh, uh, I think so. Yeah, for one month. So at the time, the work hours were quite bad, and then at the time, I was like, I think I more or less like secured a position. So I was like, okay, I got a job. Um, I finished uni. Then what is left is just a girlfriend. <laughs> then no, then the then after it's like, then what? Yeah. So my question was, I, I realized like, then what? What am I chasing for all these things that people told me that I need and I want? Yeah. Then that's where I also realized like, oh shit. Like I, I guess like never really think for myself of what I want to do, mm. what I enjoy doing. It's not about, because most of the time, Practical, ma. It's not about what you want to do. It's what is best for you, mm. and what is best for you may not be and what like, you what want to do. And like, what is the proven route, la. Like you yeah. see, people so called have success by going this route, right? Get good grades, get a job, get married, have kids. Yeah, right. It's a Singapore dream. Ugh. Yeah, gross. Ah, uh, okay la. I won't say gross la. Uh, sorry, yeah. you're living in event. Event just. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. oh gross. <laughs> uh, let me puke a what. <laughs> That's Singapore. No, I, mean, like, I mean, when you put it that way, it seems like everybody. <laughs> it's not my bad. I don't mean to insult anybody who wants to have that dream, okay? I don't mean that. <laughs> she not panicking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm just making fun of you. Yeah, but the, yeah, it's. I mean, when we put it that way, it does sound like, oh, machine printing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's printing. what I meant. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, don't panic, Yvette. Don't panic. I'm just joking. Other people who are listening are like, wow, Yvette is a bitch. <laughs> Oh, she did my dream. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean like, I guess like different people want different things. Lah. Yeah. And it's not like you're more, you're better just because you are, you opted out of the Singapore dream, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. yeah, sometimes we, we... But it's just that like, uh, Jeanette is saying that it's like, we don't see that there are other routes out there if you don't mm. venture mm. out of your comfort zone, exactly. right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's really difficult to really venture out of your comfort zone in Singapore, so... I feel, cause it's, you're not you're not rewarded la. There's a lot of obstacles you go through if you want mm. to go for the non like talk just talk about freelancers la. Mm. The freelancer lifestyle in Singapore is like really really tough, mm. especially when it comes to the art scene or the the creative scene la. Right, freelancers you're yeah it's hard to make a proper decent living unless you are like that top. 1% kind of thing I, I feel. think not really they, I've seen people who are freelancers and they seem to be doing okay you think so? yeah mm. yeah maybe there's my different perspective because I I've known friends that are like struggling but some of them they 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 are uh, I wouldn't say privileged la, but they like maybe husband and wife and the wife like take a more uh, soft approach but the husband is still hustling oh yeah so it's like yeah, but then you you see it's like oh, it, like if she if she does it alone, it's difficult la. But actually, to be honest, actually everywhere also like that la. Mm. In the US also, people who are freelancing they also earn dog shit money. <laughs> mm. Yeah, then they struggle and stuff like that. But but uh, but in 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 like for example the US or like LA, there's this community where and this environment where like oh everybody hustle and. 
you know pursue art and stuff. Wait, yeah, what's Singapore. The point? It's more about <laughs> I don't know. I also don't know. I'm just kind of lost it. Uh, just, we're going back to oh, we were so, oh, okay, so venturing out of our comfort zone. Yeah. yeah, there's growth outside our comfort zone. That's what yeah. we're talking about. So that's what your main mindset is. I think it boils down to what you want. Also, you know In what life. you want, what you value, so what now, you are willing to take. But then the struggle for. is also, how do you know what you want is what you want, right? Yeah, you have a whole life. You have to, to know yourself, it out. No, yeah. because there are people who think. There are a lot of time people think that they know what they want, but after achieving what they want, then you realize that this is actually not what I want. This is what the society wants me to want. Honestly, if someone reaches that point, that's great. Because then, even, then, a, then they are closer to finding yeah, out what true. they want. And they'll be like, oh, it's too late. <laughs> I'm in too deep in the Singapore dream. <laughs> I mean, I guess going to pop out another cake yeah. then. <laughs> 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 and so then now you're back then. Like how is it? What have you been doing? What have you been up to? <laughs> uh, I mean, so now that I'm back, I I mean I found myself a job and I guess maybe is your bigger question like how has this changed me or like what's oh, the next step oh. for you <laughs> yeah like what's the next step uh I think for now in a way I'm glad I got it out of my system you know I'm glad I'm mm. went and pursued it and did everything that you know when I was in the office I dreamt of doing mm. I got it all out so that I can say I've done it, I've experienced it and I don't feel like some a part of me is chasing something or missing something anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I can feel like, okay, I've got to this point and now, you know, I'm prepared to work. You know, I, I've reached a new stage in my life and I'm prepared to work and, uh, you know, maybe settle down, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then who knows, maybe someday I have a new dream and then mm-hmm. I would go chasing it, yeah. But at least I have done this one thing that I've always wanted to do. I mean, for at least three years. So for the Australia part thing, are you still thinking of working towards that? Or that's kind of like, if there are opportunity, then maybe, but you're not like actively looking at it. So after my New Zealand thing, I've come to terms that maybe now is not the best time. But I'm gonna leave the leave it open, you know, leave that option open. Maybe 10 years, 20 mm. years down the road, you know, mm. I might be able to do it when, you know, we are more financially stable and mm. and we there being are you and me and my partner. Mm. Yeah, and then we have uh, an opportunity. Yeah. But at least I've come to this conclusion after being there for a year. Mm. Instead of, you know, sitting around all day thinking, oh, you know, my life would be better if I was in Australia. Mm. Da, da, da. You know, they're kind of like what if yeah. yeah, that most people always talk about the mm. what if. Yeah, at least I know. Okay, it is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's true. You can consider now Japan huh? inspired. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. So my short term, short term, short term, short term. Yeah, have your mindset changed? You know, or in the rather, of this conversation. yeah, or rather, you know, are there? I guess more. I guess like more like it. it like having sitting down and just like talking about all this like does make me reflect a bit lah. Mm. La. I mean like the whole Japan thing like I always wanted to stay there for uh, I mean at, the, at this moment not definitely not permanently yeah but more like experiencing the language and like just being an environment that I, I want to be in la, for mm. extended period of time because mm. personally I, I haven't been staying I haven't stayed overseas for long periods of time. Like, y'all have done exchanges, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, I never I never had the opportunity to do so. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think that's actually maybe why you are kind of more reticent about living mm. overseas for a period yeah. of time. Because mm. yeah. I've been, I've done that for exchange and I, like, I kind of know like how it made me grow. So, mm. like, I've seen how I've gained from that experience. Mm. But Just you know it's also different because you will be friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When you're but alone, but you still grew too, you yeah. know what I mean? Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Yeah. So I can kind of see how being pushed out of Singapore will help you gain something la, yeah. which is intangible because mm. I feel like I did a lot of growing during that period also. Mm. like in the way I thought about like gender mm. <laughs> and like feminism I think I felt that grew a lot mm. during that period so. there's something in you Kenneth something <laughs> in you that is growing oh, oh, you know, don't it's, let called, it it's you. called a tumour <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> it's cancer cells it's dark humour I'm gonna yeah. die soon <laughs> 
No one saw that coming. Extra <laughs> 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 limbs. <laughs> it's like the alien, you know. The <laughs> psh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. Oh, like, Jeanette, it's maybe. so effective. Yeah. I don't know, but I yeah, mean, how much do you want about, it? Yeah, you know? it's about how much you want. Yeah, it. that's true. It's really yeah, that. But I think because for me, like, I don't. I, my career, right, I don't have a set route to my career anyway. Mm. So for me to like just stop and then like try to think of something else to do, I don't. For me, it isn't like a huge shift in the mindset. The only thing I'm worried about, and I guess also because we talk about it, is is the loss of income, lah. Mm. But I feel like if I save enough money, I mean, how much is it? Come how on, much is maybe enough? one year. Yeah, you save twenty k. Yeah. Mm. You know, so the trade off is twenty k. I mean, depending, maybe in Japan, you get to you get to earn some money, so you mm, can offset. You do, yeah. Yeah, so let's say you happen to offset. So it's really 20k, mm. you know, then, okay, maybe you think if you invested this money and it grew and whatever, but ultimately, the baseline is 20k. Mm. That's all you are, mm. your, your financial loss. Yeah. Can you make up this 20k in other ways? You know, mm. can you put a value to your experience? Yeah. I mean, exchange... Cost twenty k too. Yeah, you but know, not my money. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> well, <Wow>, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, yeah. nice Thanks for rubbing it in for someone who never had the opportunity. Middle to go class. <laughs> <laughs> I think my mom actually did put aside money for me to do exchange, but, but I never, never go. Uh, why? Because I was result driven. I was trying to pull my grade See, up. See, gosh, yeah. yeah, that that was. I I think, I, I think a lot of people can resonate with yeah. that. Honestly, yeah, but I, I think really if I didn't push, push if I didn't go exchange, I think I would have regretted not going for exchange. Mm-hmm. Because it was mm. really a life changing. I think you can only say that after, after you've been it, right? Yeah. Yes. So I can tell you, I can guarantee you 100% if you went to Japan, you will never, you will not say, I regret taking this year off. To be honest, I don't think so. I, I know that I won't regret it. Yeah. But I, I'm just trying to see how I can soften the the pain of, mm. of making that decision. Yeah. Which is only something you can reconcile. Yeah. And, and now it's also tough because. Uh, as in, like with a partner, so it's it's you. Okay. It's your about partner seems like really to like <laughs> take off. No, because it's like even if I leave my job now, right now, to do do it, like oh, it's also difficult it. for her to do. So because yeah. she like just started or whatsoever, yeah. So finding that opportune timing can be challenging. Well, we shall see in like a year end of this year. Mm, I mean, now you can't do it anyway. So yeah. yeah. Or can you? Hmm. Depends on because what depends on what kind of visa you want to get it when mm-hmm. you go there. Yeah, yeah. there's always like op- opportunities, I guess. Yeah, mm. to do so, you're just finding yeah. out that sometimes there's no real right time. Also, oh my god, mm. it's true. It's true. <laughs> Ima sugu. Ima sugu. Ima sugu. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's that? No. <laughs> Does that That's mean all. No, no. Explain. That's all for the. <laughs> It means now immediately. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Then I just went, yep. 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 I Meanwhile, let's have dinner first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any closing remarks? Oh, closing remarks. Uh, yeah. How's your experience oh, no. um, huh? <laughs> on this podcast? podcast? Would you like to start your own? <laughs> your own oh, channel? You I'm really quite inspired because I've always thought it would be a bit weird to talk to. Okay, I've always known if I start a channel, I would want to have someone to talk to so at least uh, it's not so mm. weird but then actually uh, no it's okay <laughs> I started it alone <laughs> talking to the camera by yeah, myself yeah. actually I wonder how that would be like but mm. actually being in front of a camera and being in front of the mic yeah. it's actually quite feasible mm. I feel mm. like if I had a strong topic and a direction of why yeah. I wanted then to then you become say, more engaged in, when you're engaged yeah. in conversation you don't think about the lights the camera exactly and exactly. Yeah. and then I would just blah 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 but I would Definitely shorten it. Yeah. Mm, less. Make it bite-sized. So it uh, depends on the approach. La. Yeah. Like Yours I think is more long form. I when guess. I come to broadcast, I didn't, I just wanted it to be a conversation. I, I didn't think. Yeah, his is them rambling. Yeah, I, mm. I, don't, I don't treat it like, a, like I need to sell a message. Mm. I just find an interesting conversation topic that I want to talk about or like, mm. when, especially now we bring people in, we have, we are trying, I try to open up the kind of conversations we have. Yeah, then I kind of just let it run. Um, I, I I do know that sometimes we are a bit rambly. I have had a comment that, that oh, one advice for you. Like, I never asked for advice, but okay, sure. <laughs> Give me a constructive advice, like be rest, rambly. I was like, right. I mean, if you don't listen and you find it rambly, I, I, I'm i not holding a gun at your head, right, to listen. So if you have zero listeners, that's fine with you, right? 
I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I, having having listeners is a bonus. Yeah. Uh, so if there are people who, and there are there have been a few people who have like reach out and say, oh, I enjoy actually enjoy listening to your podcast. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's just like chill. Like it's not meant to educate. I don't know. I wouldn't really call it that. I meant I meant it for educating. But yeah. actually, you know, Yuxing say that she finds what we say some quite insightful sometimes. Mm. Just because of our it's our opinions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So, so, so the important I, yeah. thing about podcasts is that you need to have opinions mm. and you need to share them. Mm. That's the main point, lah. I think that's why people will be interested to hear because they want to hear your opinions. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I think this podcast has been fruitful. Lah. I thought the whole conversation about yeah, like, I, like I didn't expect I didn't expect us to. In fact, I think at the start it was like a bit like <laughs> where are we going? That's like <laughs> we, 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 we haven't like, we haven't even set the context that we are like talking about. Yeah, so I thought that was we we ha- we should have set the context first. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, but, yeah, you should have seen start Kenneth and then suddenly end Kenneth like, hmm, event yeah. in Japan for one year. I was like, oh. <laughs> no, actually, oh, we, already, we already planned for that pizza. one. I owe you pizza. <laughs> Wait, in fact, we, already, we actually already talked about that one. Yeah, but yeah. you were yeah. like, yeah, not convinced. Yeah, hesitant, hesitant. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. Even, though, okay, even though I'm still hesitant. La, but you're like, it's a just, little bit more like, that is something Actually, to possible. be honest, no, la, it's the same. <gasps> I I have the, the, the motivation to do so. And I do want to experience it. So what it. changed? So what changed? It's just reflecting and like oh. maybe think about it a bit more. Lor. Maybe oh, after ask yeah. him tomorrow. Maybe. Because yeah. it, it was at the back of my head but I just don't actively think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's more about like just uh, I guess less worry like maybe just think less about the what? the Out the after. what do you call it? The opportunity cost. Mm. Yeah. Think about the opportunity gain. Wow. Oh. Oh, snap. And that's it for today. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good faster end yeah, 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 we, yeah. we won't get any higher than this. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys enjoy, Jeanette. Say bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See bye. you guys. Bye.